Um, our company is a um, uh, basically a seven billion dollar company based in the United States. It was formed in 1917 really to create off-road mobility in vehicles. And today we're very true to that form. We're, we operate in four segments, our largest being our defense segment, where we build all the um, heavy and medium payload vehicles for the U.S. Army and the Marine Corps, uh, as well as the brand new MRAV all-terrain vehicle, which is being, now being deployed into Afghanistan to save lives. We're also involved in uh, access equipment, which is a segment that's a global leader in building area work platforms, telehandlers, scissor lifts. They're generally used on job sites around the world. Uh, we're involved in fire and emergency markets. We're the largest manufacturer of fire trucks uh, globally. Uh, we're the leading manufacturer of aircraft rescue and firefighting and snow removal vehicles globally. Uh, we're in towing equipment and a number of other markets. And our last uh, segment would be our commercial segment where we build uh, concrete mixers, uh, refuse packers, uh, and uh, truck mine cranes. I think like most uh, defense companies, you see that there's certainly going to be a challenge in defense budgets going forward. It starts be before the president's initiatives, really, uh, in the sense that we're in a great recession. And with that great recession means that you need to spend every dollar wisely. Uh, and then you have the added threat of potentially pulling out of Iraq, Afghanistan, all those things are probably important to all Americans, but to a defense company that means potentially, you know, lower revenue. So we need to be able to provide best value, you know, really in any competition. Um, that also means that we, mean to, we need to be more cost effective. I think defense companies generally have not adopted what I would call um, sort of tech strategies where every year you see, you know, the devices in your home get cheaper and cheaper, your TVs, your electronics, uh, and yet defense products tend to get escalate in cost. And so we as a company have strategies to try to bring down our cost to our customer every year. I think we're facing a big challenge that we, we need to understand better. Um, certainly there's a, a strong push for acquisition reform, meaning more competition. Uh, but now recently you had the Supreme Court that now opens the door for more financing of political uh, debate by corporations. So you couple that together with some of the uh, uh, competitions that we've been in recently that all been protested and been very vocal. Now you wonder, well, um, will only large companies with big political war chests uh, win because many of the competitions that we've seen have become very vocal and very politically charged where uh, local um, you know legislators are very much pushing their local company uh, and putting pressure on the Department of Defense and really other agencies to award contracts to their local cons constituencies coming from a smaller state you know, which over a period of many years doesn't necessarily have as strong a delegation as a larger state, you know, that can be an issue. Uh, today we're well represented in Wisconsin, but, um, you know, those things can change over time. Um, it's difficult, but you have to work harder. You have to love your customer, really provide terrific service and provide a great value proposition because if you can provide it at a lower cost than the competition, at some point the public will hear uh, the story about your product and service that it's more effective at a much lower cost and then that political uh, pressure can't come to bear. So that's really where we focus. Um, well, before the Great Recession, there were about $7 billion. Uh, last year they went down to 5.3 billion globally because some of our markets are very cyclical. Uh, our access equipment market uh, went down in 85 percent in terms of new equipment sales last year. Having said that, in fiscal 2010 we're expecting a very strong year. We don't give street estimates. And I'm not going to endorse them, but sell site analysts today have us somewhere between 7.7 .7 .7 billion and 10 and a half billion sales in 2010. So it's really all driven by the MRAP all-terrain vehicle, which is a very interesting uh, competition. Uh, came out for bid in mid-December um, 2008. Uh, by January 12th, we had to submit our proposal, which is voluminous, took up a, a, a minivan. 
we had to deliver our first vehicles by February 23rd. So we had to, we had to design them, procure the uh, parts, build the vehicles, test them on our own, deliver them to the test site by February 23rd. And then it went through a, a fairly lengthy testing cycle. It, it, it basically it took a yeoman effort by many people. We were working, you know, three shifts, you know, 24 hours a day to build the prototypes and really to, to develop the proposals because we had less than a month to design and build and develop the proposal. So it was a great effort. Uh, we learned on June 30 that we um, were awarded the contract. In the very first month of July, we had to deliver 45 production vehicles. When you think that some of our lead times on our parts are 180 days, that means we obviously have to lean forward a little bit to win this one. Uh, by December of 2009, we were building 1,000 per month. We had tripled our defense production in that short period of time. And we had Secretary Gates visiting us uh, to thank our employees for their great effort. Well, in actuality, in every one of our segments, we have a significant defense component. For example, in the fire and emergency uh, area that you just mentioned, we build command and control vehicles, uh, you know, law enforcement vehicles. We build virtually all the vehicles that are used by Camp David in the White House for command and control, hazmat, uh, um, you know, emergency response. So we have a very significant component of that business. Uh, as well. We try to leverage our skills across our company in that respect. We build um, the tactical firefighting truck for the U.S. Army that's on the backbone of one of our heavy tactical vehicles that we build for the Defense Department. Um, so that is a you know, core strategy of ourselves, of our company, to leverage you know, you know, those skills across our company.